Hey guys, welcome to Creative Living with Bren Haas. I'm your host, Bren Haas, and I'm super excited today to introduce you to my friend, Kayla McCure. He is awesome. He is going to be sharing with us some amazing landscape tips for autumn. So here we go. I hope you enjoy the show. Hi, Bren. How are you? <laughs> hey, Caleb. Oh my gosh. It's so awesome to talk to you again. <laughs> oh, yes. I was so disappointed in Columbus. We didn't get to spend more time together, but everything was chaotic and it was just fun to see you. I know. That was cool. Hey, I didn't, you know, and I forgot to stalk you while we were there. Did you speak or were you just hanging out? No, I was there for part of, there was a young professionals event the day before everything started. So I was there as part of that. And then I got to hang out for a couple of days afterwards. So that was really fun. Very cool. Did you like Columbus? I did. It's really nice. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and the trade show was fun. It was great walking around. Uh, I love the farmer's market across the street. That was yes, gorgeous. That's my favorite. So very cool. All right. So we're going to talk gardening, hopefully. Because you, you have been gardening for quite a while, right? Like, tell me how long you've been gardening. Probably about... At this point, about 15 years. Um, I started when I was a pretty little kid. Yeah. Um, I was laid up for a while. I had hurt my leg pretty badly. And so I was in bed with books for about six months. And when I couldn't go outside and play outside, I was reading about being outside. So after that experience, I was like, okay, I'm going to garden all the time. And I was lucky to grow up in the countryside in rural Missouri. It was really beautiful. And we had lots of wildflowers on our property. So uh, it's grown since there. Yeah. So 15 years ago, you were two? <laughs> no. I was, I was about 11 or 12 at that point. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're just so young. That's all. So um, now we garden in different zones. I'm up in Ohio, so I'm in Hardy Nose Zone 5B6, roughly. You're down in Arkansas, right? I am. I'm in Little Rock, Arkansas right now, but I've had my growing experience has been a little bit all over. I work for a perennial nursery in St. Louis. So that's a zone five where I grew up is a zone six, seven borderline. I then went to school in Kansas on the prairie, which is a zone four ish, five ish. Wait, and a then prairie? I went, a prairie. Yeah. On the tall grass prairie in Manhattan, Kansas. That is so cool. Sweeping across, sweeping across. It's so cold in the winter. Uh, do you have photos from, of that? You have to share that. I do. I'll have to put some up on my Instagram. Yes, please. Yeah, it's an incredible landscape. And that from is- that, I moved straight to Florida on an island off the south coast of Florida. So I went to zone 11 for a while. <laughs> wow. And now I'm back in zone eight. So that feels a little bit more normal. Temperate good, again. Good in between right yeah. there. Yeah, but it's a good average. And Arkansas is a great state. It's so beautiful and very lush, of course. Well, that I was there uh, spring, but it was yeah. very, very green. I mean, I think you could grow, you can grow a lot there, can't you? Yeah, we have a, we have a really amazing range of plants. We've, it's been really dry the last couple of weeks, so everything's going very brown. Yeah. So I'm a little concerned, but, you know, that's, that's the weather for you. Yeah, we're experiencing that actually up here in Ohio. It's very dry. Now, down where you're at in the autumn, uh, down in Arkansas, do they get a lot of that fall color like we do up in the north? We do, actually. Here, okay. it's, we're about at the borderline. If you go much farther south of us, like into northern Louisiana, okay. you won't get much fall color at all. But actually, one of my favorite trees is the sweet gum, a liquid ambar. And we have those all over. And in about a month, they'll start to turn. Nice. <laughs> so. That is so cool. So in all your traveling, um, were you primarily doing landscape design or when did you get involved with the landscape? I've been involved with garden design since I started at my parents' property. They own 72 acres on, <laughs> <laughs> on the rolling hills, the river hills out along the Mississippi River. <laughs> So it's mostly wooded and forested. So we have a lot of woodland trails. So I started out there. So I got Very my hands cool. on a big scale. And then my five years at school were training for landscape architecture. So that's an even bigger scale. And then when I went down to Florida, I did 
fine garden design there. And now I'm doing fine garden and estate design with Alan um, throughout the Southeast. So I'm currently a designer for P. Allen Smith and Associates. I don't think I said that at any point in here. That's awesome. I know. It's like, you should tell that to everybody. That's, a, that's quite the thing. It's very cool. So I'm thinking with all those acreage your parents had, you probably were very good. So you didn't have the chore of mowing and weeding maybe? I was the gardener rather than the mower and the weed eater. <laughs> so I let some of my siblings do that. There you go. <laughs> while, I was, while I was weeding or planting or harvesting or pruning. All right. They also had to prune the orchard. So that was February was pruning the orchard because it takes a while to prune that many trees. Oh, yeah. No, that's very cool. Um, so we're heading into autumn or we are in autumn already. Oh, my gosh. This year just flew. What is your favorite thing about autumn in the landscape? Well, the first thing is that it's time that it's actually nice to in, enjoy being outside again. For us, summer, you know, even in the evening, it's, yeah. it's pretty warm here in the yeah. south and as you go down into the Gulf, the Gulf Coast. So for us, it starts to be the time when you're actually ready to go and enjoy your garden again. And the cooler weather also means that a lot of great plants start putting on new flowers. And so my favorite thing about gardening in the autumn and the autumn landscape is just you start to see that change again where you get new flowers and you get new colors and you get that beautiful lower light. And so I was very happy for autumn to return. <laughs> right. I'm trying to think now where you're at um, zone A, you do get snow, but it's not like a normal thing, right? Yeah. We'll get snow maybe once or twice a winter in a really light coating, you know, half an inch to an inch at the very most. And it, it goes pretty quickly. That's nice. That's just perfect. I think. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's really hilly where we are too and where I grew up. So yeah. everything shuts down because the minute the roads get yeah. any ice on them, you know, you can't let a school bus go sliding off those steep and hilly roads. So. Right. And you guys probably don't have salt trucks and things like we do up north. You know, maybe. I, I feel like I've heard the numbers and the entire state of Arkansas is something like four snow trucks or something like that. That's bad. So, yeah, they go up in the mountains. <laughs> not that not bad. For this year. <laughs> Yikes. So um, earlier you had mentioned a tree that's in your area. I don't know. Okay, what was that again? It's a sweet gum or liquid dambar. Okay. You probably know it from the tree that leaves those really prickly balls. Like... They're called gumballs in people's yards. Yeah. There's some new cultivars that we really like. They're called slender, one's called slender silhouette. That's Ooh. narrow and it doesn't drop those fruits. So it still nice. gets beautiful autumn color, kind of reds and yellows. Um, but you don't have to worry about all that cleanup. So right. that's, no, I love that's that. an exciting thing. Yeah, I wonder what hardiness zone those are rated at. Do you have any idea? They you know? go up at least to four, maybe three. Oh, They're, wow. It grows up pretty far into the north. Oh, I've got to find one of these because I have a lot of problems here with, well, we have a lot of walnut trees. You know, they yeah. grow easy and quick and they're so messy. And um, mulberry. Oh, yeah. Which are great. But like out in the wooded area, not up mm -hmm. where you walk. <laughs> right. <laughs> so the mulberries turn such a beautiful yellow though. It is, and it is just starting that one actually is showing some color, but a lot of the other trees, too much heat stress and I'm not they're burning, you know, so I'm not really seeing that color yet, but we'll see. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. You'll see it a lot sooner than I will. <laughs> yes. <laughs> totally. Yeah, that that would be weird because your autumn color probably comes on closer like to Thanksgiving. Like you may actually yeah. still have color during turkey time, right? Yeah, those photos of the Brugmansias that I sent you flowering that we're gonna talk about in a little bit were taken on November 30th and December 6th Ugh. last year. So that's, that's our real fall. Our fall is just barely starting. I think today was the first morning that it really nice. felt cooler, so. Yeah, that's nice. See, up north come Thanksgiving, it's actually, it's kind of blah already. All the trees are naked for the most part, you know, mm -hmm. except maybe a ginkgo or something, depending on the frost. But oh, yeah. um, so fun. That's so cool. So do you have any other um, trees that are your favorites during autumn time? Um, I really like ginkgos as well. And those, it's a really good idea to try to get a fruitless cultivar. Um, 
because the, the fruits are pretty messy. I know that, you know, none of our nurserymen friends want to hear us recommending fruitless ones because they're so hard to propagate. They're so expensive. But if you're thinking about planting a couple in your yard as a gardener, or if you're thinking about recommending some trees for your city, you really want to push and get a fruitless one because otherwise your kids and their grandkids a couple generations from now are not going to thank you for that, for that <laughs> fruit mass. <laughs> no, but they can actually do a lot of damage to the hardscaping and concrete and, oh, and messy, just messy. Right. Yeah. There was a corner, there was a corner of campus at K state that we always avoided at that time of year because there's a whole cluster of ginkgos that fruited and just, you'd see people just split and walk around so they could, had to avoid them. Oh, that's horrible. <laughs> and that's Luckily not what you want from a beautiful tree. Luckily, the one I have, it doesn't drop fruit. It's just, I don't know, is that the male then maybe or something? Yeah, like usually that? it's a male cultivar that doesn't fruit. So. Okay, very cool. Um, let's, um, let's talk a little bit about shrubs. Do you have a favorite shrub from the landscape during autumn? Sure. One of my favorite shrubs for autumn blooms is the Brugmansia or angel's trumpet. These have, these grow all really, they're winter hardy to their roots to about zone six and then seven and up their uh, branches will stay through the winter. So they make a full shrub. Um, and farther north, you can grow them in a pot and keep them in your greenhouse or your garage over winter. They're a lot tougher than you think what they look like. And they grow in most, you know, in most years, they'll put on about six feet of growth if they've died back to the ground. They have massive leaves, and then they have huge, amazing flowers that can be over a foot long. They're really fragrant. Oh, I love them so much. And here, they kind of bloom in flushes every six weeks or so, mm -hmm. uh, starting really in late July, and then they keep going till a really hard frost kills them. So you'll get these, the whole plant will just be covered. It looks like somebody took, like, trace paper and made all of these flowers and just hung them out and the smell in the evening is incredible wow even in the autumn they have the scent yes the scent especially in the autumn it's this like really sweet tropical scent that's nice uh, and it carries on that crisp air it's an amazing contrast uh, so. i need to get one of those in my dome that would be so cool <laughs> yeah i'm wondering too you know because everybody doesn't have a dome or a greenhouse which they should <laughs> I highly recommend that. <laughs> um, I wonder, do you have any idea of like, what would they do if you brought them indoors for the weekend or for the weekend, for the winter? Um, would you want to prune them back or what do you think happens? They actually like to have a little bit of a dormant period. So they okay. don't like to behave like your typical tropical house plant. Right. So they prefer actually cooler weather. I'm, not sure where they originate, but I'm guessing they originate somewhere fairly high altitude because they don't really like it as hot and dry as it is in a lot of our homes during the winter. Right. So if you can let them go dormant and keep it in your garage, like you, they, you can let them frost, get frost once or twice and drop their leaves and then just shove them in your garage. And that's probably an easier way yeah. than attempting to store them is as a house plant inside the actual house. They're also yeah. huge. Yeah, like, that's what I was wondering. Want, yeah, you're going to need, it's going to take up a third of your living room. <laughs> you got one. That would not be good. <laughs> All right. So let's see. Should we, do you have any other favorite shrubs in the autumn that you can think of? I was trying to think about it. I um, know this one's really great. So it's kind of hard. <laughs> yeah. The other thing, it's, they're not shrubs, but they're about the size of a small shrub is the threadleaf blue star. Mm, uh, I don't know Amsonia that. hubrechtii. It's an Arkansas native perennial that has really beautiful blue flowers in the spring. It gets about three or four feet high and the leaves are like threads. They're really, really skinny. And in the autumn, they go a vibrant gold, like incredible yellow. Uh, they're actually, they're pretty easy to find. A lot of good gardens, like local good garden centers and some of the big perennial growers carry them and they're really drought tolerant too okay there's somebody down my street i live in this neighborhood where it's the historic district and people love their gardens out front and right across from my office there's somebody who has these oh, a whole bunch of them planted it in front of their retaining wall and they love that dry hot spot and they're winter hardy as well up pretty 
pretty far north. I think they're a four or five as well. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Be- and the flowers in the spring are incredible. They're like a powder, powder blue. Absolutely lovely. Does that sound familiar? I'm going to have to look it up. <laughs> yeah. Um, it was on the cover of Nancy, Andra, and uh, Stephanie Cohen's fallscaping book, I think. There's this oh. beautiful photo of them. Okay. It's really, and I may have just messed up who wrote that book, but I think <laughs> I've got it right. I haven't reviewed that if one. Not, so <laughs> if not, friend, I know all of those people are my friends, so don't don't hate me if I got the people who are involved in the book wrong. <laughs> I love you, and I, I know who actually wrote it. That's right. So no worries. Um, I have to look that up, though. That sounds really pretty. Blue flowers, because I don't. I can't think of anything blooming blue right now, except some of my grapevine has some of the leftover, you know, oh, berry. Yeah. Well, it blooms in the spring. It blooms between. Oh, your tulips. okay. It blooms between your tulips and your irises. Okay, huh? So it's a really useful time. It's kind of in that green gap when yeah. things haven't necessarily got going yet. Right. Have, no, that's cool. Not a lot of blue flowers at that point either. So yeah, you're we right. find it really useful. That is. We'll have to look that up. Um, I know up north here, I like um, the hydrangeas get a really pretty oh. leaf, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. There, and there's so many great new varieties out. I'm still a big fan of the limelight. I love limelight. Or my oak yeah. leaf. Oak leaf is yeah. awesome too. I love oak leaves. They've got such great fall color, but <laughs> limelight's fantastic. I used 300 of them for a wedding design over the summer. It was amazing. What? <laughs> Yes, it's a whole drive where you just had limelights. Well, we actually, we used limelight, little lime, and silver dollars. So three different paniculatas. Wow. But panicles, uh, hydrangea paniculata are some of our favorites. They're beautiful. Very cool. How in the world, how did you, like, was it a walk or a drive or something? It's a whole driveway. So just as you drive down, you just have a bank. Oh, gorgeous. Oh, yeah. I hope you share photos of that. Did you put it on your Instagram? <laughs> Yeah, come over to my Instagram and you'll see what I've been up to lately. So. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And that's at? That is at the underscore curious underscore gardener. Perfect. Uh, or search my name, Caleb Melchior, and it'll come up that way as well. <laughs> so pretty. You know what you should do if you ever do that again? Like take your camera and do like a short video of it. Is oh, that- yeah, that would be fun. Or fly, fly a drone and take photo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> all right. Oh, I'm also thinking, I know spireas are kind of, eh, but they do look really pretty come late fall, at least up oh, north. Yeah, some of their foliage color can be incredible. Um, I think it's, there's Spirea thunbergii has the little narrower leaves, and there's mm-hmm. that cultivar ogon that's already gold through the summer. Yes. But when it comes autumn, it goes all kinds of colors. It's such a great plant. Gorgeous. And the cool thing, too, I know I noticed on mine uh, earlier today, a lot of my perennials, because it's not been so dry, they've mm-hmm. dried, you know, they've died back in the fall, so there's not really yeah. a bloom. So I see my bees still hanging out, like, mm-hmm. on the Russian stage, of course, that's still blooming. Yeah. Er, yeah, that's still blooming. But those spirea blooms that are just still popping there, um, the bees are loving it, so that's always a bonus, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's good. My other, uh, this is going more into perennials territory. and once Okay, I get perfect. Let's start like, talking that. <laughs> once I go in perennials, I can go all day long. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> my, one of my favorite uh, perennial genuses is salvia. I mean, you, you can't go wrong. We have salvia garantica, uh, blue sage, I think is the common name. Mm-hmm. Black and blue is one of those really good cultivars. That's perennial for us. So mm-hmm. we just plant masses of it. And I think it, it overwinters fairly far north as well. I know okay. a lot of times they'll sell it as an annual, but it's such a great plant. Yeah. You, um, I'm thinking you could, I mean, that's actually in cut flowers too. Like you could use those for bouquets and stuff too. Yeah, right? they're beautiful. Yeah, totally. And very nice. Um, I'm trying to think other annuals. Of course, up here, I've got a lot of sedum. You know, the sedum mm-hmm. have the pretty, um, that going on. And um, yeah. <laughs> I love, my dad put in a small retaining wall and he was trying to figure out what would be something good he wouldn't have to take care of. So he did, a, I had him do a combination of panicum, which is Virginia sweet, switchgrass. Oh, nice. Really 
really poofy grass. And then we did some really dusky sedums with that, just kind of alternating in groupings. The bees love it and it looks so good for so long. I mean, they're still babies. They, he just planted them in the spring, but that he doesn't have to do hardly anything to it. And they just, you know, look fantastic right now. So I love it. And the grass you can keep color. up and the grass you can keep up. I keep mine up as a winter interest too, actually. Um, yes. I don't know if you do that. It looks pretty in the snow, believe it or not. <laughs> <laughs> they tend to get a little bit soggy here because, you know, you guys get snow and we get that same precipitation as rain. Yeah, no. Oh, so that for would us, be they start to go a little bit mushy, but we still leave them because if you yeah. cut your grass is down too much in the winter, mm -hmm. the rain gets down in their roots and they'll die out in patches. So point. for us, it's really important to have that foliage cover there or otherwise we're going to lose a lot of soil in the winter time. Yeah. That's so nice. we leave, we leave a lot of the grasses up, but we, I mean, we love our grasses. Right. And that's a great idea for autumn landscape too. Cause Oh plumes, yeah. Those plumes change too. Some of them. They look fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Pretty cool. Okay, so let's, I don't know, do you, are you a fan of annuals? Oh, yeah. Uh, there's not many groups of plants that I don't get a little bit too excited about. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> do you have a I, favorite one for autumn? Um, one of my favorites, and this can be, it's a tender perennial as well, so a little bit south of here, like along the Gulf Coast, it'll come back, and along some of the West Coast, it does, but the flowering maples, or abutilons, uh, they have really incredible flowers that look like hanging lampshades. They're all kind of shades from, I think there's a couple of white cultivars, but there's, they also they go all the way from yellow through all kinds of burnt oranges and reds. Um, for the south, I really like varieties that are bred from Abutilon megapotamicum, which has a really unpleasant name to say, but they're really, they're really little flowers and it's really, and they have a red top and then this yellow bell that like opens up at the bottom mm -hmm. and they make hundreds of them that are really little and they're really heat tolerant. So some of the big fancy ones that you guys can grow up north in yeah. window boxes, we can't grow because our summers are too hot. Just too hot. Yeah, but those Megapotamica varieties, there's one called Tiger Eyes. It's also known as Biltmore Bell that's got kind of, it's almost like a tie-dye effect of yeah. red and yellow. Gorgeous. It's spectacular. And the hummingbirds like it too. Ah, that's good. And so autumn, autumn is their time. They'll kind of put out some flowers in the summer, but once the nights cool off, they are spectacular. So that's one of my top autumn annuals. Very cool. <laughs> I love it. Do you, um, are you much for planting annuals specifically just for autumn? Well, for yeah, us, fine. we do a lot of, instead of thinking about like our seasonal plantings as mm -hmm. like spring, summer, fall, we tend to think more warm season and cool season. Hmm. So our warm season annuals are still going now. We've done like a renewal planting in the middle of the summer. So mm -hmm. we'll do like another set of zinnias and sunflowers and things like that. So those look amazing now. Mm -hmm. And then kind of the end of this month going into November, we'll switch to our winter stuff that goes all winter long. So that's when we can plant pansies and snapdragons and, you know, wallflowers and those kind of things. Mm -hmm. So our autumn kind of bridges – those two groups of plants. So we have some kind of weird combinations happening at this time of year <laughs> where all summer things are left and a little bit of new stuff is coming in. Um, but that, that's, that's how we stage those. All right. Well, one of the things that you were asking a little bit about is what's the most important things to do in your garden in autumn. And for me, one of the things that I really love about autumn is a sense of abundance. Everything's been growing all the time. But in autumn, you want to plan for that abundance to continue. One of the ways that I do it is by using this time of year to chuck in bulbs in between all of those perennials and shrubs. We, I want my garden as layered with everything as possible because even in 72 acres, you never have enough space for all <laughs> right. of the plants. So um, and, you know, in nature, you'll never find a vacuum. There's always something, some kind of plant taking up that space. Totally. So this time of year, my mom always gets really excited when the rains come back in because all of a sudden the fall bulbs that we've planted 
over the years will just spring up into flower. And so one of my favorite genuses is the genus Colchicum, which are also known as autumn crocus. They're really big, fat, satisfying bulbs. They're about this big. Wow. Um, they're like the size of your hand. And they'll bloom the first year after you plant them, which That's is incredible. Great. So you plant them at the end of August, beginning of September. It's probably a little bit late now to plant them. You might be able to get some on sale, but they might not bloom. Um, and then a couple weeks later, they'll put up a big flower that looks like a chalice without any leaves. And the leaves come up afterwards and stay through the spring, where they look almost a little bit like like a kind of wonky hosta, I guess, is wow. the best way to describe That's them. a good description. <laughs> <laughs> but I love them because they give something really nice and green Yeah. through the winter, and they look really fresh. Um, right. But I love those flowers because you'll be walking out, and I tend to use them with a lot of epimedium, um, the really good shade ground cover. Okay. Um, and oh, it's really fun. dense. Yeah. And then the culture comes just come up through them, and it looks like somebody just dropped a couple of flowers out in the garden somewhere. That's cool. Um, I really like the cultivar water lily. It's got really big flowers that are Ooh. double, really pink. I'm, they're really gaudy, but this time of year is about. So now, now something like the water lily though, you, when would you plant that to get it to bloom in the fall? That one you still plant at the end of all, you, buy, you probably have to order the bulbs in June because you want to okay. get them. Mm -hmm. If you wait until fall to order the bulbs, they'll probably be out. Okay. Um, but you plant them in late August, early September. And then that first year, they bloom a little bit late, usually kind of october -y. But then after that, we have, I think in my parents' garden, we have four or five different cultivars. So we have some blooming earlier. Like there's a couple of species. Um, I have a white form of regular Colchicum autumnale, which is just a uh, fall blooming Colchicum. Uh, and that one blooms really late water lily blooms kind of mid-season and we've got another big pink one called the giant that i think blooms pretty early wow. i'm trying to remember what there's another one or two that bloom really early but it's been 10 years ish since we planted them wow. so that's nice yeah See, so they've I started think... to kind of bulk up they yeah started to look really nice. oh right they just because they'll multiply right in the yeah sweat. That's cool. I think, um, so when I think bulbs, so I think, okay, oh yes, it's bulbs. I need to plant my, that will bloom in the spring. But I think people yeah. do forget there are actually quite a few bulbs that will bloom in the fall, right? Yeah. And they're kind of a bonus because you kind of just chuck them in among your perennials and you're going to take care of your perennials anyway. Right. And then all of a sudden in the fall, they just arrive. Yeah. Uh, the other genus that I really like for kind of cool season bulbs are cyclamen. And there's, Cyclamen cum and cyclamen heterofolium. And cyclamen heterofolium blooms in the fall and has beautiful leaves through the winter. They kind of look like ivy leaves. Heterofolium means ivy leaf. Okay. And when I studied in Italy, they have whole hillsides that are just covered in that cyclamen wow. in autumn. And they have all these little floaty pink flowers in the fall. So mm -hmm. I have those in my parents' garden and they're really nice. But then if you want some that bloom in the spring, you can plant cyclamen cum. And it has more rounded leaves and they have little chubbier pink flowers that bloom in the spring. There's a cyclamen for you all winter long. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I guess um, I'm not familiar with those, so I would definitely have to check hardiness zones to see if they will last up north, like I'm up, you I think know, it's a five, five. I can't remember if it's five or six. Right. Are so you maybe if you planted, planted them in a nice uh, sheltered area, maybe they'd still survive. The yeah, they're a great container plant as well. So if oh. you have like a sheltered porch or something that you could put them in. Nice. That might be an idea. Oh, that would be so pretty. There we go. Yeah. So cool. Yay. Yeah. I'm glad we talked bulbs. Gosh, boy, now I've got like a billion things I want to plant in my yard. <laughs> Gosh. A couple I need to look up because you know that fancy lingo. Oh, <laughs> uh, I don't know about that. I, I'll remember plants' names and I won't remember people's names. Uh, okay. And the plants can't get offended, but the people can. You, true. It's probably better off to remember them the other way around. Yes. Well, but you got a bonus. You can grow flowers, so you can just give them flowers and they'll love you back. Right? That's true. That's <laughs> true. forgive you. Here's a plant. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm sorry I said your name wrong. <laughs> no worries. All right. Well, this is awesome. This has been a lot of fun. I know you're super busy. You've got a lot to get to. Um, maybe can you share with the audience, uh, where's the best place we can connect with Caleb? Oh, sure. You can come find out about me on my website, which is just my name, calebmelchior.com. Um, the blog is there. It's uh, slash journal. And it's called the Curious Gardener Journal. And you can find my Instagram handle is at the underscore curious underscore gardener. So same name occurs within all of them. It's pretty easy to find. Yeah. Um, and those are my main platforms. So good luck. I'll be happy to see you there. I love it. Thank you so much for sharing with us. Oh, thank you so much, Brent, for having me. It was great chatting with you. You've got my brain all buzzing with ideas, too. All right. I'm so excited about autumn. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Oh, it's great to see you.